Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Lachlan. This is the Data Chronicles, and here are your data points. Today, we're going to be talking about the health breach notification rule, which is the FTC's version of notices that may be required after a data breach following the compromise of sensitive or health information, including how the FTC has recently enforced that rule and what they're thinking about in terms of next steps as the FTC has proposed to revise that rule significantly. I'm pleased to be joined by two of my colleagues, Alyssa Golay and Flora Oke, who are both part of the privacy and cybersecurity team here at Hogan Levels and both focus their practice specifically on healthcare and sensitive data. Alyssa, Flora, thanks so much for joining me. So Alyssa, maybe I can ask you to get us kickstarted. Before we jump into the proposed new rulemaking, let's talk a little bit about what the existing rule looks like. Can you just describe maybe at a very general level, what is the health breach notice rule and what is it required thus far? Scott, sure. So the health breach notification rule was originally issued in 2009. So it's not new. It's been around for a while. However, it's recently been enforced by the FTC and so kind of sparked new interest. It's basically like the breach notification rules under HIPAA. So you are required to notify individuals and the FTC in the event of a breach of health information. However, the key difference here is that it covers consumer health information rather than protected health information that would be governed under HIPAA. So it's originally kind of identified to help provide notice to individuals whose health acquired or accessed in an unauthorized manner, but they wouldn't have been notified because that data wasn't PHI. So Alyssa, if I'm getting it right, it was almost the attempt by Congress and the FTC to close some of the gap that was created by how HIPAA applies uniquely to only specific types of healthcare organizations, as opposed to covering all healthcare data. This was really a measure that allowed for the FTC to have expanded ability of enforcing breach notice rules that under HIPAA wouldn't apply to all different types of health data. That's right, Scott. Around that time, they had some state breach notification laws, but again, there were a lot of gaps between those and laws at the federal level. And so we've seen a significant uptick and kind of expansion in both state laws and federal interest in covering consumer health information more recently. But this is kind of one of the the OG requirements that we had before the increase that we've seen more recently. So let's pause for a moment on that, Alyssa, because I think one of the difficulties, as you well know, is that following an incident, the obligations to report can be numerous and often complex because, as you noted, the obligations can come from the state law level, they can come from the federal level, they can come from specific regulatories. HIPAA has a notification rule, the FTC has this notification rule, the states have their notification rules, industry, some specific regulators have their rules. How does the health breach notification rule kind of work in connection with that collective, the collective set of breach notice rules? Is this just an incremental and additional obligation that may apply sometimes? So yes, it may apply sometimes. It depends on what data and institutions are impacted by a particular incident, but it may require notice to kind of a different regulator, right, depending on the type of information. So here it would involve notification to the FTC rather than HHS, because they would be kind of separate, right? Where if it's PHI, then you'd be required to notify OCR and follow the HIPAA notification rules. But if it's a consumer health information, now you'd be required to notify, you know, the FTC or potentially state regulators and provide provide notice under state privacy laws, since a lot of those state laws have exceptions for HIPAA. So again, if it's HIPAA, you'd be covered for the most part by HIPAA, so you wouldn't have to notify under this law or the state laws. But if you're dealing with consumer health information not governed by HIPAA, you'd have to notify under the FTC health breach notification rule and some of the state laws. You'd have to look on a case-by-case basis, since not all of the state laws cover health information under the breach notification rules. But as you've seen of new state privacy laws are really focusing on health information. So they have expanded the scope for some of the breach notification rules and then also the the broader um, kind of more general consumer privacy laws. So Alyssa, the health breach notification rule has been around for a while as you're describing it and would require kind of notices in the event of breaches involving sensitive healthcare information that may not otherwise be covered by HIPAA. As I understand it, the FTC has actually been quite vocal over the course of the past couple of years about the number of cases and number of reports that they're receiving under the rule. Are they just so overwhelmed with reports that they don't know what to do? 
Actually, it's the opposite, Scott. They were aware and had some awareness of all of the reports that were going to other regulators, including states' attorneys generals, but unfortunately had only received a handful themselves. So I think this is more an indication of, hey, did you forget to notify us under the health breach notification rule and kind of a reminder to companies that they do need to be submitting these notifications under this rule as well? So that's a good point. And I think now, right, the reminder has perhaps grown a little bit more than a reminder and is now using a stick to say, you know, hey, by the way, you did not notify individuals under the health breach notice rule. And so they've taken enforcement actions over the past couple of months. What have those look like? That's right. We've seen two so far, but then additional guidance issued by the FTC as well. Those cases are the GoodRx case and Premom. And so those were cases in which the FTC found that those companies failed to notify them for unauthorized disclosures of health information. And so they did issue civil monetary penalties against those companies and are working with them to kind of ensure that that doesn't happen again. And it was very much a warning shot sent to the rest of these consumer health information companies out there where if you're dealing in sensitive health information, you really need to make sure you're adequately protecting that information and also notifying the FTC and individuals of any unauthorized disclosures that would trigger the health breach notification rule. That's a great point. And one I want to come back to in a moment, but is around to whom does this law apply? But before we get there, maybe Flora, I'd ask you to bring you into the conversation. You recently were one of the lead authors on an article about proposed changes within the health breach notification rule. Maybe you can describe what's happening in addition to all of the new enforcement that we're seeing. What is happening on the policy side about where this rule may go in the future. Yes, thanks, Scott. There's been a lot of activity as far as enforcement relating to the regulation of health information, and this new development just adds to that buzz. So in our article, we noted that the comment period recently closed for submission regarding changes to the rule. Those changes involve clarifying the rule's applicability to health and wellness technologies, and also expanding the types of incidents for which notification would be required. So these are the general policy things that are happening at the FTC. So Flora, I want to dig into that a little bit because as Alyssa and I were just discussing, there are a number of existing data breach notification statutes that are already on the books that would require notification in the event that health or sensitive information is exposed or compromised following a security incident. Why do you think that the FTC is kind of now pushing further into these areas? And you know, what do you think is motivating the proposed set of changes? That's a really good question. And I think that the FTC is pushing further on these because of the explosive growth of these direct-to-consumer health and wellness technologies. So because we now have apps that collect a lot of information about our health, sometimes these technologies use that information in ways that the consumers don't know about. So sometimes these companies collect this information and while the consumers believe that the information is just used to track their sleep or their fitness, that information may be further used for perhaps marketing purposes that the consumers don't have an initial notice of. So the FTC, we believe, wants to hold these companies accountable for what they say regarding how they use the consumer's personal information, specifically their sensitive health information, since these are the types of information that we hold dear to our hearts and we want to know how companies are using our information. So, Flora, I mean, I think what is interesting to me about the new NPRM is just really why it's necessary, why it's happening, kind of what is special about this unique moment in time where the FTC is very much focused on expanding or enhancing the health breach notification rule. So if if I'm thinking about the context that Alyssa just described a moment ago, We have an enforcement era where the FTC is very much going after or scrutinizing the practices of organizations in the healthcare sector who are processing sensitive information. And then they're doing that under their traditional Section 5 authority for unfair deceptive trade practices. Now with this enhanced ability of saying, you know, hey, you didn't comply with the health breach notification rule. And that's another kind of area that you get dinged for. 
And now as they're expanding that role, it sounds to me like they're kind of doubling down on the focus of sensitive data in particular, including what you tell consumers about how that information is gonna be used and disclosed. And then importantly, that individuals need to be notified in the event that that information was compromised following a data breach or a security incident, even if those individuals may have already been able to receive notification under the variety of other statutes and rules that would apply to that same data. Interested in your thoughts on whether that tracks with your thinking or whether you see the combination of increased enforcement under Section 5 and the NPRM as two totally different things. I think that tracks with what we've been understanding the FTC's trajectory has been. So their enforcement under the FTC Act and also under the health breach notification rule kind of go hand in hand. Under the health breach notification rule, we want to emphasize or they want to emphasize the sensitive information piece of it. So they want organizations and these technology companies, when they use individuals' sensitive health information in a way that the individuals aren't aware of, and that results in a breach or unauthorized disclosure of that information, the FTC wants to hold these companies accountable for that unauthorized disclosure because this is particularly sensitive information. So I think we are both in alignment on how the FTC is thinking about these issues. Yeah, that's a good point. And maybe, Alyssa, I'm kind of interested in your thoughts on the overall importance of this development. Maybe starting with the question is, I assume that it's crystal clear about what constitutes sensitive information and what are the types of healthcare organizations that would be subject to a rule like that. It would be great if it was crystal clear, Scott. Unfortunately, it's not quite that clear. And one of the things that the the proposed rule is trying to do is kind of expand the scope of who may be covered as well. There's always been a little bit of ambiguity in terms of like what app providers and kind of other online health information companies might be covered by the health breach notification rule. And here it seems to expand the scope even more and may introduce further ambiguity in terms of who is covered and, and what types of data are covered. I think the FTC may take the position that, no, no, we intended to be this broad and to cover all this kind of new types of technologies, companies, and data that are being introduced uh, given the explosion of direct-to-consumer health and wellness technologies that are coming out. But I think that's kind of led to additional confusion on the company side in terms of, am I really covered by this? What type of data is covered? It seems like they're really trying to get at a lot of other information. And so I think it's going to be a little challenging for some companies to navigate exactly what's covered and kind of if they are in this context as well. Alyssa, it's a really good point. And I'm actually interested in both of your perspectives because you each make the point around that the fact that one of the things that's driving this development is the explosion of, you know, health related apps and health related technologies. And, you know, obviously that's a broad concept. And so maybe Flora, I'd ask you, what type of companies should be concerned about the proposed rules by the FTC and how they may impact them? That's a good question, Scott. And once you highlight that, what you said about health information being a very broad concept. So in thinking about that, we want to alert companies such as connected devices who collect diet information, fitness information, even sleep information, those technologies, those companies could need to comply with this rule and think about how this rule impacts them. Also, technologies that collect mental health information, any type of information related to the human body or how the human body works, companies that collect, process that type of information should be aware of this rule. So Alyssa, I'm trying to ring fence that in my mind and I'm having trouble because you know, the apps that I use on a daily basis, I think many of them have some components of physical activity and movement and diet and many things that I just use on a daily basis may not be focused on health, but may end up collecting some level of quote unquote health information. Am I, do I need to be concerned then with all of those apps? Or if I were the company that's producing those apps? 
if you're the company that's producing those apps, like this is your opportunity, right, to evaluate what type of data you're collecting, why you're collecting it, how it's going to be used, and determine kind of whether this law will apply to you. The scope of the health breach notification rule, right, may expand very widely in light of this proposed rulemaking. And so this is a good opportunity to go through and kind of evaluate that. We've also seen a significant increase in regulators' desire to regulate this type of information under the various state laws. So yes, unfortunately, if you're one of those companies, you do need to be concerned or at least aware of kind of what's going on and take stock of what data you have. And it's not only regulators, which I totally agree with that regulators are increasingly focused on this. Look at all of the cases relating to trackers as an example, but it goes to the legislatures too. Like for example, you know, Washington and Connecticut and Nevada, a number of states are producing laws that are specific to health and physical activity and what would otherwise think of as sensitive information. Is that right? That's right. The legislators at the state level are looking at that. On the Hill, Congress is also looking at that. We saw them issue a letter of support for the proposed rulemaking that the FTC was engaging in. And then we're also seeing plaintiffs' lawsuits looking to enforce against health-related incidents or the trackers, as you had mentioned. So this is an area that a lot of different regulators, legislators, and individuals are very focused on. Okay. So my last question or two is... You both have painted a picture of a rapidly evolving landscape where there are a number of obligations that may apply at the federal level, may apply at the state level, may apply in this context, but not in this context. I think many of our clients who are in this space would say, boy, where do I start? What are your thoughts? So I think it's what we had kind of just spoken about, taking stock of what are you doing now? I think we as individuals, and I think regulators as well, don't want to stifle the incredible opportunities and innovation that these companies can engage in. I mean, we all want to help promote better, healthier people, but I think they do need to kind of be accountable and aware of what data is being collected, what purposes it's being used to, and and what they're saying to individuals about the data and the uses of this data. And so I think kind of an initial first step is making sure that you're aware of what data you're collecting, how it's being used, where you're maintaining it, and making sure that you've got the appropriate protections and controls around that data. So in other words, as I think about this, it's almost as that even if you didn't necessarily think of yourself as a healthcare company, or think of yourself as being regulated by all of these very onerous and strenuous data protection laws that are focused on health-related data, with this new rule and all of the associated state laws, you are going to look very much like a regulated healthcare organization in the end, because you're going to have to abide by many of the same rules that healthcare organizations did. Potentially, right? You may look a lot like a very regulated entity, but you may have some existing processes or activities that you can leverage to help demonstrate compliance with these state laws or kind of make sure that you're otherwise meeting the requirements. So, Fleur, maybe I can direct the final question to you. You made the point earlier that the NPRM is now, comments to the NPRM, I should say, are closed. And so, presumably, the FTC is taking in and considering all of the feedback that it received. Alyssa made the point a moment ago about how organizations need to look at their existing policies and figure out if there are updates that are needed. We don't know what the final rule is going to look like, but are there kind of specific policies that companies should be looking at in the meantime, anticipating what this new rule will bring? Yes, specifically, companies should want to take a look at their incident response procedures. Given the requirements surrounding breach notification, we want to implore companies to take a look at their incident response procedures, their incident response plan, maybe link up with their IT departments, understand how they handle incidents, how they handle notification to round out their incident response plans in light of this rule, should it come out. Really appreciate Fleur and Alyssa, your time this afternoon and for engaging with me on the new proposed health breach notification rule. Really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you both. With that, I'm Scott Lachlan. This is the Data Chronicles and those are your data points. Mm -hmm.